So you want to use the PAXA integration or you want to know how to set the PAXA integration up. Well, today I'm going to run through two parts of this video. Part one is going to be setting up this integration inside Halo PSA. And part two is how we leverage that integration when it comes down to recurring invoicing to make our lives much easier. Now, before I get too far into this video, um, I will just point out at the start that, that Renada um, is not an MSP. We kind of are, we're an MSP for MSPs in a way, but what I mean is we don't sell licenses to our customers. So my pack say is going to be very empty. I have put a few free subscriptions on there, some NFRs, just to hopefully demonstrate how this can work. Um, obviously, in your environment, if you are selling a bunch of you know, 365 licenses, etc. You will have a lot more to do than I will today. But with that being said, let's get stuck into it. So I'm just going to change the scene over to scene number one. I will one day get a stream deck to make this all um, more efficient. But for now, let's get stuck into this. So the first thing we need to do is go into Halo, actually. Go down to configuration in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Go down to integrations and then you will be at the integration page. You could either scroll down and find PAX 8 or you can search at the top PAX 8 and then click on the little plus. Now, this little plus isn't actually enabling or disabling the feature. What it's doing is showing you the feature in the side menu or not. So if you end up not using the PAX 8 integration, don't just think by clicking this off, it will stop everything. It won't. You have to disconnect from the integration. So I'm just going to press the little plus, which will make it turn red. And then I'm going to go and click on Pax8. And it basically needs two things. It needs the client ID and it needs the client secret. Now, these are sourced from Pax8 itself. So let's go and set these up. So let's jump into Pax8. And the first thing you want to do is click on users on the left hand side. You want to click on um, your user, I believe. Um, if you're not a partner admin, then I think you'll need to use somebody else's account. But again, I I'm, I'm can't 100% validate that. All I know is you need to click on yourself and make sure the role is partner admin. From there, you need to click on developer apps in the middle. And then on the right hand side, you want to click create. You've then got to sign your life away. Obviously, it's really important that you read all of this. Um, I'm not going to do that. I've already read it in full detail. Right, so I'm just going to sign my life away and the developer app name, I'm just going to call that Halo PSA. None of this bit really matters so far. You can type in there whatever you want, really. And then it's going to spit out a client ID and the client secret. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy the client ID and post that into Halo. And then going to copy the client secret and paste that into halo and i'm going to click test configuration now what's about to ha oh okay if if you get unsuccessful and um, which is what used to happen they've clearly changed something and um, you have to basically close this developer app page um what used to happen is, is you would press test and it would say you know incorrect login or misconfiguration or whatever it said um, but closing this developer app window would fix that problem so if you do notice that just make sure that you've closed this box inside of PAX 8 um, and then that should work. Now, once you've done that and you get a successful test or test successful, um, you need to move down to customers. Now, the PAX 8 integration is, in my opinion, the best integration inside of Halo PSA because it doesn't actually require you to pull in all of your customers. Now, if you've done no integrations before, that will mean nothing to you. But just note that PAX 8, I think, is the only integration that works like this. Now, what you'll see is that it says map customers do not need to be imported in this integration. It's the only one from my knowledge, unless you override it. So the first thing you wanna do is click generate mappings. What this is doing is this is trying to match customer names inside of PAX 8 with customer names inside of Halo PSA. Now, inside of my PAX 8, I have my companies and the company is called Renada Solutions Limited. Whereas inside of my Halo, if I just go to organization, my organization is called Halo PSA Test. I'm in my sandbox environment. That is why when I click generate mappings, nothing happened. 
just going to go back to that Paxa integration. If nothing happens and you don't get any customers here, um, you've probably got a problem. But usually you'll get some customers because the, the names will be homogenized across your platforms. Now, if they don't match, what you need to do is go ahead and click on the plus on the right hand side next to the word add. And you want to start from top to bottom in my recommendation. So we're going to start by selecting Renada Solutions Limited. That then says, okay, we have Renada Solutions Limited as a customer inside of Pax8. Who do we want to match them to inside of Halo? Um, and I'm just going to type in Renada YouTube customer. Again, it doesn't really matter. Um, Sorry, I have really itchy eyes today. It must be hay fever. Sorry, slight jump cut. Again, it doesn't really matter what you match it to as long as you think they are the right customers. Now, what I recommend to some of my customers is um, during this process is let's actually take the time to, you know, sort out the mismatch names. It could be a good time for a bit of data cleansing depending on how bad it's got. Um, again, we're all familiar with this years after year. Season after season, our customer names start to drift and change. And before you know it, Renada Solutions Limited has six different spellings across six different platforms. So again, it's really up to you. But what I'm going to say is I'm going to map Renada, Solution Limit, Renada Solutions Limited to the Halo customer, Renada YouTube customer. And I'm saying, yep, they are the same entity. Um, and what's really cool now is in most integrations, you've got to click import customers. Now, you don't have to do it in this integration. Um, what that normally does is it will sync the ID from the Pax8 customer into Halo and map it into the database. Now, you don't need to do that because when you import subscriptions, that process happens at the start. Um, if you was using Pax8 as your source of truth, let's say you had no customers inside of Halo yet, but all of your customers existed inside of Pax8, then you could just leave all the mappings alone, click import customers, and it will carbon copy, if you will, Pax8 into Halo PSA. And the added benefit then is that they are then linked together. For me, in my environment, I don't need to do anything else. I've mapped the only customer I've got inside of Pax8 or company into Halo PSA. And then all I've now got to do is go down to subscriptions and click import subscriptions. This will then show me that Renata Solutions Limited has two subscriptions and I'm going to click start. And you will see on the left hand side, they both say done. So if I now go to Renada YouTube customer and go to my subscriptions, you will see that I have an exclaimer signature cloud two, and I will have a Sentinel complete NFR one. What you will see because they are NFR is that there is no sell price. Now, just to note, the Pax8 integration does currently not expose the purchase price. You will never get your purchase price from Pax8 into Halo PSA, but you will get your sell price. So just to reiterate that, when you pull these subscriptions from Pax8 into Halo, they're going to exist under the subscriptions page of that customer, and you're only going to be able to see the sell price and not the purchase price. Okay. Just jumping back to configuration, integrations, and Pax8. If you do ever add a new customer in Pax8 um, and the names are different, um, you either need to click generate mappings or add a mapping to match those customers up so you can sync those subscriptions. Then finally at the bottom, what you want to do is enable the Halo integrator for the Pax8 integration. Now, you've got two options here. You've got customers and you've got subscriptions. My advice is you only sync subscriptions and make the customer side of things a manual task. The only reason that I say that is, is because if someone does happen to make a customer inside Pax8 and inside of Halo and the names don't match, they will end up with duplicates. You'll end up with duplicate customers inside of Halo. Now, depending on how many integrations you have set up, you can obviously see how that can become a problem very quickly. So where it's not a two-way or synchronous integration, i.e. this isn't, if you make a customer in, in Halo, it doesn't push to Pax8, it is Pax8 to Halo, um, I would say just set up subscriptions and make that customer part manual. This will then sync once a day, I believe it's midnight of the time zone that you're in, and that will then pull the subscriptions down from Pax8 
and update your customer's entity inside of Halo. So that is step one, that is setting up the integration. Step two, that was four, step two is how we leverage these subscriptions um, onto recurring invoices. So let's go ahead and go to an invoice and I'm just gonna make a new recurring invoice. So currently we've set up a subscription under um, Renada YouTube customer. So I'm just going to select that customer. And then I'm going to go and add a recurring product. Now a common misconception, and I say a misconception, in my opinion it should do this but it doesn't, is that once you enable that Pax8 integration, all of those subscriptions are going to appear inside of Halo. Whilst that statement is true, they don't appear as products. So you will not find any of your Pax8 subscriptions inside of Halo. However, what you can do from Pax8 is go down to um, b -b -b subscriptions and you can export or download all of your products that you resell and then you can import those into Halo. Again, it's down to how you want to display that information. What I usually recommend is when customers start creating their recurring invoices that they actually manually make them, but that's up to you. So just to be clear, even though my customer, Renada YouTube customer, has, where subscriptions, where art thou here, has exclaimer signature and Sentinel-1, they will not exist in my product section inside of Halo. We have to make them manually and assign all the costs manually. So I'm just going to make, I'm just going to go ahead and copy Sentinel-1 complete NFR. I'm just going to go to products. I'm going to say this is a recurring item and I'm going to make a new recurring item. I'm going to call this a Sentinel complete NFR. And all I care about right now is that this is a recurring product is ticked yes the cost price i'm going to say that this price of this cost uh, the price of this to my customer is five pounds and the cost to me is three pounds um, again i always recommend setting these um, as a global um, when you're making these products and um, that way you can always edit them later you'll notice on the right hand side we have recurring price and recurring cost and you'll notice two check boxes the really good thing about this is is let's say that the sentinel one cost actually goes up and it's now four pounds to you you can very easily select this change it to four and then update that item cost on every single recurring invoice in a single click of the button the same goes down to price if your cost goes up and you marry that with your price you could then say actually you know now it costs our customers six pounds per month update the price on every single invoice we can override these down here i'm not going to go through that right now but that is making that product then we need to go to invoices and i'm going to add a recurring item let me just add the customer of renada youtube customer and then i'm going to add a recurring item of sentinel one complete nfr and I'm just going to say the quantity is one. Now, so far in this process right now, we've not used the PAX integration at all, the PAX8 integration. We've manually made a product and we've manually added that product to the recurring invoice. Now, the real nice bit about these integrations with distributors in Halo, in my opinion, is they're quite flexible. What I mean by that is we can use the same integration or the same subscription quantity across multiple line items. So I'm just going to add business premium monthly. I'm going to add one of those as well. Now, the way we leverage the integration and keep all this stuff married up is by editing the line item with the Sentinel-1 NFR. And we dictate where we want the quantity to be calculated from. And I'm going to say I want the quantity to be calculated from the subscription. And then I can click add on the right hand side. And then you select what subscription you want to update that line item with. And I'm going to say the Sentinel-1 complete NFR. We can then say they get X amount free a month. Let's say they currently have 10. You could say five of those are free. That way it would only show five on the invoice line. We can add a minimum quantity. So let's say actually when you sign up that customer, you go, do you know what? You're below our minimums. But if you commit to 
five business premiums or whatever, we will honor that. So you can make sure that there's always a minimum of five on here. And the last bit, or the bit we're all here for, is the pro rata section. Now, I believe Pax8 charge you pro rata from the date the change occurred. So let's say we've got a 30 day month and the license costs 30 pounds, $30. If you add it on the 15th of the month, Pax8 is gonna charge you $15. That's how I believe Pax8 operates. Typically, I don't touch this inside of Halo. I leave it as the top one. Pro rata from the date the change occurred. This way you incrementally bill your customers depending on what day they had that service in the month. If you want to bill for the entire period, you could do include changes in the next invoice. So this would be for the full month. You can even um, immediately invoice for changes. So if they you know, add something middle of the month, you could immediately invoice for that change. Or you can exclude the changes from the next invoice. So I'll leave you to play with this one. My recommendation personally, to be fair, to be kind, is the pro rata from the date the change occurred and press save. Scroll to the bottom and press save. And currently you'll see it is zero. As soon as I press save again, that quantity will now be pulled from that subscription under the customer Renada YouTube customer. Finally, I mentioned that we can leverage these um, quantities in different ways. So let's say that I'm actually going to remove business premium. I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to add a generic product and I'm going to say manage service charges. Okay, if I could type. Now, the way my company bills manage service charges, we don't, but stay with me, is um, based on the number of users they have. So I'm just going to do calculate quantity from subscription. Now, I don't want to do users inside of Halo PSA because that number could go up and down if we make a test user. We don't want to be billing for that. It becomes a bit of a, you know, tight one to manage. But what I can tell you is, is in this scenario, if Exclaimer sees that person as a user or a mailbox, we want to be billing for that. Now, again, take this with a pinch of salt. I probably wouldn't apply this to this one here. But as you're seeing, you can start to actually say, hang on a minute, we could base it on the number of business premium, business standard and E3 licenses. And that count then dictates the monthly managed service charge. I'm just going to say it's exclaimer and I'm going to press save and then save again. Uh, price is 55, it doesn't matter. And then press save. And then our managed service charges will then be dictated by the number of exclaimer licenses the company has. And you can add these together. I could say, actually, I want it to be both exclaimer and Sentinel-1. So I can go ahead and press save. That should then be now three because we have two exclaimer and one Sentinel-1. So you can really start to juggle with these subscriptions to you know have some really accurate billing depending on what you need. Um, but that's basically it. Um, it's not amazing integration. It's okay. Um, it's reliable is all I can tell you. Um, I don't really have many issues with it. There's been a couple of bugs in the beta versions, but that's why we set on stable. But essentially, you need to set up the integration. You need to pull in all the subscriptions to your customers. You need to make your recurring invoices manually. And then you want to tie the quantities of those subscriptions to the line item quantities in your recurring invoices. I hope this helps you. That's as much as you can do with it as of right now. Um, the last thing you could do is you could run a report to compare your CSP or Office 365 license quantities to your Pax8 quantities. If you want to see a video on that, please let me know. As always, I've been Connor. I hope this video helps someone out. Have a lovely day and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Goodbye.